So good morning. It is 15 after the hour. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, this is virtual strategic planning. My name is Kimberly Kaler. I'm president of AOE, which is a fully owned subsidiary of ACI. We're the for-profit consulting division. We do everything from marketing and event planning to association management, and we're really excited to be the ACI premier sponsor of the convention. Look forward to hopefully seeing all of you in the fall in person. We'll see if that happens. I hope you're all um, you know, safe and, and well, where, wherever part of the world you are dialing in from. So starting off with strategic planning, I, I like to share from the very beginning that strategy has its roots with the word um, back to army and to lead. And that's real important as we start to talk about what strategic planning and what strategy really looks like. So even in the best of times when we're not dealing with a pandemic, when I tell people that I do strategic planning or I talk about strategic planning and the importance of it after I, I speak with a client, I typically get a groan and people roll their eyes. Um, it's a tough process. Um, it, you know, it's, it's designed and used to formulate an organization's strategy and to create the goal cascade. The reason that it is so important, in my opinion, is because it really helps serve not only guide your organization, but also serve as a strategic um, decision making tree, if you will. Um, you know, so whether you're talking about a strategic plan for your ACI chapter, uh, maybe for your own organization, that strategic plan should serve and guide you in terms of what to do and just as important, what not to do. So if done properly, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy, um, you know, whether we're talking about a pandemic or not. So I'm going to flash back to last March, um, which, you know, it's hard, hard to believe all that's happened in this last year. But um, my team had two strategic planning sessions actually scheduled with clients. And my, my cohort, um, Kathy, is actually on the, the line with us today. And we were preparing and getting ready for doing these in-person sessions. The groundwork is complete. We had done um, stakeholder surveys. Um, most of them had done by, done by phone, but in you know, online surveys. But we were ready for that in-person session. And then COVID hit. And so we immediately talked about, you know, do we try and do this virtual? But in the beginning, we're like, no way. It's going to be too hard. Um, honestly, we didn't have a clue how to do it. Um, you know, part of strategic planning and the importance of it is for us to be all in that same room and captured and really dedicated and focused to that one topic, the topic at hand. So, uh, you know, if you flash forward a couple of weeks, we put off the decision, hey, we're just going to put these, these planning sessions on hold. Let's see what develops um, over the next couple of weeks. Surely we'll all be able to get together in a couple of weeks in short time. You think back to last April, um, it became apparent that an in-person meeting wasn't going to happen for a very, very long time, um, at least not, you know, any time in the next couple of months. Um, so, you know, one of the other reasons we had decided to hold on these virtual sessions in the beginning is because a lot of the people we were going to have, um, you know, potentially in a virtual meeting weren't terribly comfortable with virtual tools. Um, but, you know, by April, most of us have gotten very familiar with uh, comfortable or with, with virtual tools. So, it, it, you know, we decided, hey, we need to move ahead. And then probably most important, tools aside, pandemic aside, um, you know, we actually recognize that the pandemic was a rallying cry and we really needed to get together. Um, you know, the, the organizations that we were working with saw the impact of the pandemic or maybe didn't know what the impact of the pandemic would be. And we really needed to look at strategy um, is probably more important even than before the pandemic. So we had to figure out how to do it. And I want to share with you some lessons learned as we've conducted many planning sessions over the course of the year since that time. So one of the lessons learned we learned we, we really want to share with you is the importance of um, sharing relevant content and data as much as you can before a session. So if I think of a traditional strategic planning session, I get you know eight to 10 folks in a room, maybe they're all board members, maybe they're all committee members with a certain focus, some sort of um, you know thing that common ground that brings them together. And we recognize the importance, since we weren't doing a four hour session or a six hour session, we recognize the importance of providing touch points and information before the meeting. 
So with that said, you know, holding a, a, a meeting to prep for the meeting, if you will. So sharing the survey results, sharing the, the content, the data, the major themes before the actual strategic planning session. Therefore, when you actually get to the strategic planning session, that content, that information has already been shared with the group. So that's something I'd really encourage you to do if you're moving into any sort of virtual format or setting. Um, be very deliberate about what you want to happen, and this applies to both a virtual session or a planning session. You know, really understand what it is you're trying to accomplish during that time. And I really like to, you know, ask myself, is the time that I have planned, um, is the activity I have planned, could this be done beforehand? Could it be done through all of the members actually filling out a form? Could it be done through me having conversations with them and gathering information and, and outlining what those themes are? So whatever that you can do to do work beforehand. So when people are together, whether it's in person or whether it's virtual, virtual, you make the best use of that time collectively. You know, what do you really want people to be together for? Another idea, and we did not do this, but it's an idea that has surfaced since, and I think we will use moving forward, is recording a video highlight sharing some of these key messages. You know, so that video sharing, here's some key themes, you know, no different than I'm talking at you today, sharing that with the group before you all get together. Another key element is shortening that time segment. So for those of you that have participated in a strategic planning session, chances are it was four hours or maybe six. Um, um, hopefully you got a break sometime in there. Sometimes they can be a day or even two days long, though I'm not a, a huge fan and proponent um, of that length. We recognize because of online fatigue that it was really key. We didn't hold a four hour session. If we were in person, we probably would have. Um, so instead, we held two 90 minute sessions, um, you know, and, and breaking, breaking things out, um, you know, so that meant that the process was a little slower because we had a session and then we had a week or so in between with key themes or maybe some homework. Um, but breaking it up is really key in terms of that, that Zoom fatigue. Planning an iceberg is also really important instead of just diving into the session, you know, really knowing your audience. So if it's board members and maybe everybody knows each other really well, maybe they've worked together for years, you may not need to do this as much. Um, but it still is nice to get the creative juices flowing, get people separated a bit from the meeting they just came from, their inbox, the emails setting the tone for interactions. If you have people that have not worked well or worked together or don't know each other as well, that icebreaker becomes even more important um, in terms of setting the tone of the session. And then whether you're doing a, a planning session in person or if you are doing it virtually, it's really key you establish some ground rules. Um, you know, it became real apparent to us that we needed to make sure that all voices were heard. And again, that's important in person as well. But virtually, what does that look like? Um, you know, we all know that there are some people that will dominate a conversation and those that may be shy away. And we had to be very thoughtful about, well, how does that translate to a virtual world? How are we going to make sure that the person that's usually a little quieter, how do we draw them out? So announcing the ground rules. We felt it was really important that everybody kept their videos on during this planning session because again, this isn't, you know, here I'm, I'm talking at you, but in a strategic planning session, you need everybody to cooperate. You need to see facial expression. So keeping the videos on as much as possible. Um, empowering the moderator, um, you know, so I said from the very beginning, hey, I want to set the ground rules here. There may be times where I cut a conversation off or I move to a different person please don't take offense by it. My role here, you are paying me to serve as your moderator and make sure that we get through the agenda and accomplish the goals. So making sure all of that is, is out front from the very beginning. And of course, announcing any other ground rules. And that's something that you may have the group participate with um, in terms of how do we want to conduct this. Also key in terms of encouraging participation to design a few touch points in, in terms of sharing opinion. Uh, we did not want for every single item on the agenda to go around to every single person. We knew that would just take up way too much time. And what you end up happening, happening sometimes at that point is group think of, hey, just like Bob said, and then you add to it. So give people the opportunity when you do call on them that, you know, say to them, if you don't have anything substantial to add, 
please go ahead and just say, you know, I concur, I agree, and move on without the full explanation. Um, because otherwise it can eat up a lot of time. And also giving folks an opportunity to pass. So if they would like to take a pass on a conversation, do it. But definitely, again, design in a couple of areas where you are going to go as the moderator around the room and ask everybody for their input. Some other lessons learned, I will be very, very honest, and I, I believe Kathy would agree with me on this one. The sessions did take more energy, um, holding that space in a virtual format. Um, you know, I, I'm an extrovert and I get my energy from, from people and without being able to walk the room and have that personal interaction truly in person, um, it, it zapped me. I, you know, I was really, really tired afterwards, but it can still be done. Just know that going in. And again, that's the importance of making sure that you shorten these and do a little bit shorter time segments instead of a four hour session. It's 90 minutes or, or maybe two hours. They were also a little clunkier than I think they would have been in person. Um, you know, can still be done and I consider them a huge success but they were a little clunkier in terms of how to do it and how to interact and that got better as time went on and then being very mindful of the fact that it's longer time span for participants to absorb the material than it would be in an in-person session and that again makes the case and the importance of sharing as much information as you can ahead of time giving people time to digest it um, so that they can react to it if you're sharing information and then expecting them to react right away on screen um, they're already dealing with, with, you know, the online fatigue, et cetera. It is just a lot for our brains to be able to handle. So in terms of next steps for all of you, um, you know, I, I'd encourage you, especially if you hold any sort of chapter role uh, or maybe of your own organization, if there's a mindset of, well, we can't afford to plan now, I would say, how can you afford not to? The world has changed so much in the last year. So it's really key for you to dust off your strategic plan, start a new strategic plan, really looking at it. I said this in the very beginning and I can't say it enough, a strategic plan or any kind of planning should not just answer what you should do, but should really answer the question of what you shouldn't do. Um, ACI does a really great job of this. Ron Berg, the uh, executive vice president of ACI, um, whom I report to, ask all of us managers what should we stop doing as well so there's a real deliberate um you know evaluation instead of just adding things to the list things that were a good you know idea at one time maybe no longer fit so really clearly looking at that and where should the focus be um you know strategic plan allows you to to you know use it as a decision tree so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to any questions and invite you to um, you know, share them in the chat room if you have any. I'll go ahead and open up the chat function or you're welcome to go ahead and um, also unmute yourself if you have any questions that you wanna share. We will be sending the, the slides to all attendees in the recording if you have anything that you want to um, pass along to anybody. So that, I will open up the line. Any questions coming through? Okay, so if there's no questions on this topic, I thank you for joining today. Again, I'll invite you tomorrow. We're going to be talking about newsletters as well as podcasts. And then on Wednesday, it is social media. Um, feel free to connect with us and, um, you know, enjoy the rest of your convention. Um, look forward to, to seeing you all in person when it's safe to do so. Thank you very much.